I prefer the real Sentinel. I said the real Sentinel. Marvelous. So guys, a lot of my videos over the last few weeks have been based around the horse at Heresy. Obviously, I've been trying to do an entire Legion playlist, so that's one miniature from every Legion painted up, so you guys have an idea of what to do um, when the box set launches. So, like I said, I've been dedicating a lot of time to that. For any of those out there who maybe aren't interested in the horse Heresy, I am still thinking about you guys, thinking about some interesting content that I can deliver for you guys. So that's what today's video is all about. Something a little bit different, more along the lines of the eBay rescue style video. Um, and it's gonna be based around me getting a Praetorian Guard Sentinel, um, kind of stripped down, rebuilt, a converter that's actually put the Praetorian Pilot in it, like the, uh, the one from back in the day, and get that painted up. So for any of you guys who don't know what Praetorian Guard are, I'm gonna take you through a little bit about the Praetorian Guard Army that I have already. Um, a lot of you might not even know what they are, what they look like. And um, I'm going to talk you through a couple of the units and then we'll talk about the Sentinel at the end. So stick around guys, enjoy the video. Okay guys, this is my Praetorian Guard Army. It is a regiment of Astra Militarum based around the British Redcoat soldiers from the era of like the Zulu War. This squad in particular I think is one of the most beautiful Astra Militarum units you can get. Whenever I hear the term first rank fire, second rank fire um, announced in a game, this is what I picture. First five guys taking a knee, second five guys including sergeant firing over. I think this is absolutely stunning. If Games Workshop ever come back around and do a made to order for Praetorian Guard, I hope somebody thinks it through and gives us this squad. I do like the look of a standard squad. They are beautiful. But well, this to me, this is all I want this many times over. So it has taken me many years to put together a collection like this. These miniatures have not been sold in stores for a very, very long time. It is an extremely long process to get an army together as it is off eBay. As you can see, I'm still adding to the collection on eBay as I go. I can get my hands on special weapons and uh, no problem. I've got seven Melticons there and five Flamers here. Weapon teams don't seem to be too bad either. Here's another missile team, um, another missile team, auto cannon teams, heavy bolter teams. They're not the problem. The problem is getting my hands on more line infantry. They seem to be an absolute nightmare to get my hands on just guys with las guns. So you have to do a bit more tracking down of them but as you can see i do have a complete collection every sculpt of praetorian guard model that was ever made by games workshop i have at least one of except one and that's what today's video is all about it's an ebay rescue style video but it also ticks a box in my head and completes a collection for me and that is I finally get to add a Praetorian Guard Sentinel to this collection. I would kill to have two more and have a full squad of three. Maybe someday I'll get my hands on another two of these fine models. Um, and as you can see, it sits into the army beautifully. I'm not going to talk too much about the Praetorian Guard because I do want to, at some stage, Get the rest of these bits and pieces built and painted and give you guys an eBay rescue style or sorry a army review style video like I did my creek talking you through all the different bits and pieces of these guys so for now let's focus on the sentinel okay guys let's get down to business so this is what I had to work with this is the sentinel that I managed to get my hands on it was donated to the shop with a bunch of other old miniatures years ago and Whereas maybe the other staff dismissed it as having no interest, I dove on this as a prized possession. So step one is to take the miniature apart as much as I possibly can. Uh, this is a seriously old miniature, really old gunked up glue, um, quite hard joint. So uh, I, uh, I know it doesn't look like it, but carefully took it apart as best I could from here. I don't actually think I got any other parts of it um, to come away like this. Um, so I was going to trust in the um, acetone that I was going to dip it in. Should dissolve most of the glue and have the rest of it come apart. As you can see, I didn't want to put too much pressure on anything else. I didn't want to break it. That's okay. This is as uh, small as I got it. 
um, and this is as small as it needs to be as it would fit in the tub of acetone from here so it just dumps the parts in uh, and like I said this model is originally a, a first generation Cadian Sentinel but back when they released Praetorian Guard they did a version where they had um, the gunner man so this guy here off of the so you take him off at the waist like this they use this part to convert the Cadian Sentinels into Praetorian Guard Sentinels. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing and create an original Praetorian Guard Sentinel. It's just like that. I'm going to throw him in the acetone. And after maybe an hour I left them, um, you can see that the paint is literally peeling off as I move it around. This is the great thing about old metal miniatures is you can use quite harsh chemicals to strip the paint off because you can't hurt the, I suppose at this point it would be lead miniatures. Um, with the acetone so just a nice toothbrush I recommend doing this over you know put down some paper or something like this because you don't want the acetone getting all over your desk or even your cutting mat it will stain and take away those lines so you need to be really careful with this I do recommend wearing some gloves um, it can't irritate your skin I'm just not very sensible um, this is what all the pieces look like separate. Here's that original Cadian pilot, as soon as it focuses for me, um, that I was talking about that I took out. I didn't bother cleaning him off to fulfillment because I'm not gonna be using him. I do have that piece left over, so I need to give him to somebody someday I can. Um, and here's the cleaned off Praetorian pilot. Much more suave, this beautiful pith helmet. Um, and now it's time to get these pieces kind of fit it back together again as best I can. This is my favorite part about um, cleaning it off. It has the original pewter stamp in it, which says 1995. That means that this miniature was pressed when I was seven years old, 25 years ago. I love that. I've been thinking about that for the last few days as I've been kind of building it and cleaning it up and stuff. Like what journey has this miniature gone through in the last 25 years to go from being pressed to being in my possession how many battlefields has it stomped across how many things has it opened fire on or how many years has it been left in a shoebox under a bed forgotten about unloved and now it's going to get a new lease of life a new paint job um, i've joined into one of my uh, most prized possessions which is my praetorian guard collection um, and i don't know that little that thought just made me happy for the last few days the idea of this thing that would have gone completely wasted um, getting a new lease of life and um, so I super glued all the different bits of pieces together we didn't have a lot of spare dreadnought bases for some reason I'm gonna have to order up a bunch more every other base under the sun I've got hundred spare 60 millimeter rounds I don't know what it is but yeah I go through them quite a lot um, so I found one of the old dreadnought textured ones I managed to make them stick onto that I wanted to add as much weight to the bottom of the miniature as possible as you can probably guess it's a very top heavy miniature and because it's metal if it fell over in the game or whatever like it would chip quite badly I didn't want that to happen so I added super glue to the base and then added a lot of gravel and stuff too so that added a bit of weight. So this is it after it's all kind of cleaned up, put back together, look and swish, sprayed up. It's now time to get a bit of Praetorian Guard style paint on it. I actually struggled with my Praetorian Guard paint scheme for my tanks for years. I only ever did kind of one tank in it before and I did it in a more desert uh, style um, scheme because, you know, I went for the more traditional you know British Zulu Africa core that style desert scheme whereas when you look up the artwork for uh, Praetorian Guard tanks or ones that people have done in the past they did them in the nice rich red to match the uniform at the time I didn't really like it I was like that's not that's not for me that doesn't suit the way I like it and um, but when I did this video I was like you know what I'm gonna stick with the more traditional thing if I'm gonna say in a video I'm gonna do Praetorian Guard Sentinel I'm gonna do a Praetorian Guard Sentinel properly but by the end of this process, I was in love. Um, I didn't do it quite as bright as other people did it. I layered it up a little bit differently, but I was delighted with the result. And I now know that I will be adding some more tanks to my Praetorian Guard forces. And I'll be using the uh, techniques that I use in this video. So I'm actually quite happy with the end result as well. Uh, with the Praetorian Guard Sentinels, they do have a lot of kind of bone colored, um, I'm not sure if it's quite bone colored, more like an ivory color. Um, on some of their uniforms and they wanted to transfer that over to the vehicle as well. So those front headlamps I'm going to do in that same beautiful cream and um, that you see in other parts of the miniature. Um, it's not my idea, I actually seen someone else did it online with their Praetorian Sentinel and it looked beautiful. So um, props to those guys or to that guy or girl, whoever it was who did it. Uh, I don't know a name, it's just a Google image. <laughs> 
Uh, now adding a couple of bits of lead belcher to kind of break up the color of the vehicle because obviously any scheme that's going to be this much red and um, I'm going to need to uh, break up the red as much as I possibly can with different details and stuff. So I added a bunch of silver all over the place. Now of course giving the, the honored Aquila um, its proper color which is gleaming gold. We're going to get the, uh, the miniature washed down. So I'm going to use Nuln Oil for this. I know it's quite an extreme shade black all over, but it's going to shade the metallics really nice. And like I said, I wanted a much darker tone than the like bright eye popping red. I don't want it to look like a Blood Angels tank when I'm done with it. Do you know what I mean? It's got to look like something a little bit more militaristic. As silly as a giant red chicken walker being called militaristic as you could get, but you know what I mean. Like I said, the Praetorian Guard collection phenomenon, I don't know why, what came across me. Um, I got my hands on a single Praetorian Guard soldier back in the day, uh, unpainted, unloved, discarded by somebody else, and I nipped it up and um, decided out of the blue to just paint it up. Um, and by the time I'd finished painting up that mi miniature, I was hooked. And finding Praetorian Guard miniatures, even to this day, it's an absolute nightmare. They are all over eBay, but it costs an absolute fortune. Um, and like I said in the intro to this video, it's kind of easier to get weapon teams or a melted gun or a sergeant than it is to get, you know, the seven or eight basic infantry you need for each squad. Uh, that's where the problem lies. But I was lucky enough back in the day, and um, one of my current patrons is actually the person that did it. So that. The guy that I'm not going to shout out his name in case he doesn't want to be named out in, on a video. Um, but he actually sold me my first batch of Praetorian Guard. He had planned on doing an army years ago, he never got around to it, and then sold me on his collection for a very reasonable price, which got me my foot in the door with collecting Praetorian Guard. I think he gave me close to a platoon, so 50 guys. So I can never thank him enough. So if you are listening to this video, thank you very much, pal. I, I still cherish these miniatures to this day. Um, and I, yeah. Like I said, thank you again. So obviously I'm going now to paint the infantryman inside of the cockpit. Now he's gonna match the rest of my Praetorian Guard uniforms, which is bright red. It's not gonna be as dark and dull as the, not dark and dull, but as uh, kind of dark as the armor panels that I've decided to do. As you can see, they are a kind of a rich color. And that's because I went for the corn red to layer up the contrast that I applied, which gave it this really nice um, tone. I'm delighted with it. Now it's time to go on to the bone color. Same bone color I did for the kind of headlight covers there on the pleats and the pith helmet. And obviously his cufflinks as well. Time to layer up the skin, just a normal bit of skin paint. Like I said, the Praetorian Guard aren't a particularly fancy army when it comes to sculpts. They're quite simple. I think that's some of the, the joy in painting some of the older miniatures is they're not as kind of jam filled with detail as some of the more modern miniatures. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. Um, I love modern sculpts. Um, it just takes a little bit more time to build and paint them up. And for me, there is something immensely satisfying about taking an old miniature like this and giving it a new lease of life. Like here is the finished result after kind of a, a day and a half of getting it cleaned up. But like the day before yesterday, this was an old unloved model. And now it's something that I will cherish for the rest of my days. I'll never sell this collection on. This will be on my shelf, pride of place for years to come. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys found it a little bit more interesting. Um, then I, I was kind of worried about this one, if you're gonna find it interesting or not. So let me know in the comments below if you did find this kind of eBay rescue style video interesting. Uh, make sure you give the video a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not already doing so. And um, yeah, thank you very much for sticking around to the very end of this video. It means a lot to me. And I will catch you guys in the next one.